Dan Edmonds here. How's it going? I've got the ZR2 Bison back. And the reason I've done that is because I had requests from more than one person to put it on my ramp again, but without the stabilizer bar connected. So I've removed these. But I was also reminded that I forgot to officially place the ZR2's score on my leaderboard so we could see how it stacked up. So let's recap and make that official. The Gladiator Mojave ran just about an inch further up the ramp than the ZR2, but because its wheelbase is almost nine inches longer, the math works out to a lower score of 476 points. The Gladiator Rubicon's climb distance lagged behind the ZR2 by about 1.5 inches and the Mojave by some 2.5 inches. It shares the same long wheelbase as the Mojave, so its score is lower still at 458 points. If you want to see why that is, check out the full versions of both of these videos. At this point, the ZR2's score of 501 is looking good. It's got the better of two versions of the Gladiator, if only by a little. But of course, every Jeep Rubicon, including the Gladiator, has an ace up its sleeve a built-in push-button front stabilizer bar disconnect system. With the bar disconnected, the Gladiator Rubicon flexed its way more than 20 inches further up the ramp to an ultimate score of 607 points. That's a gain of 149 flex index points by pushing a button. And that brings me back to these links and what removing them will do to the ZR2's flex index score on my ramp. But before we get started, let me back up a bit and show you how they came off. This isn't hard to remove at all. I've turned the wheel full lock to the left to do the left front. I've got a half inch combination wrench for the bottom and a 9 16th deep socket for the top. And I've already pre-loosened this, so I'm just going to finish it off. You've got to disconnect, or disengage, I should say, the nylon locking ring at the top of this nut. And as soon as you get to this point, it's just a matter of unscrewing the top, taking that bushing assembly away, and pulling the bolt down through the bottom, and then just wiggling this out of here. I'm going to keep this together though because you'll want to put this back together as soon as you get back to pavement. You do not want to drive around all the time with this disconnected. That is a recipe for disaster. Anyway, there you go. Now I just turn the wheel the other way and do the other side. So right now, this bison's front stabilizer bar is disconnected and that should allow a little bit more front flex. How much? Well, we're about to find out. This piece of tape represents just how far the ZR2 bison was able to climb the ramp with its stabilizer bar connected. I expect to see it score higher than 501 points with it disconnected. All right, it's time to place your bets. It's right there. I'm at the tipping point. And I have to say, that doesn't look like a huge improvement. I kind of expected more. But 
Let's measure and find out exactly what we're talking about. Well, that's about it. This piece of tape and then measure. So we're looking at about maybe three inches more climb. Not a lot. Twenty three and a sixteenth. Yes, I'll do that in centimeters. For you who don't speak fractional tape measure, 23 and a 16th divided by the sign of 20 degrees is 67.4. So yeah, I guessed three inches more climb and it looks like it's 3.1. Still 128.5 as far as the wheelbase is concerned, so we'll divide it by that times a thousand, and we get 525. So that is the flex index with the bar removed. So here we are at 525 points on the flex index ramp. That's only 24 points more than it was with this installed. Is it worth it? I don't think it is for several reasons. One, 24 points just isn't that many. The Gladiator Rubicon was able to gain 149 points just by pushing a button. Secondly, you have to carry around tools, crawl around the dirt. Uh, yeah, it's not that hard, but you got to do it. And you got to put them back on when you get back to the pavement because driving a vehicle around with its front stabilizer bar disconnected day in, day out is a recipe for disaster. Oversteer, spinning out, loss of control in an emergency maneuver, all of that is a real, real threat, whereas this isn't much of a benefit. Also, the stabilizer bar is just flopping around in there right now. It could start making contact with important pieces if you don't lash it into a position. Yeah, it feels like the bushings are stiff and it won't move, but trust me, bouncing around off-road, it will. And you know, also, finally, you gotta remember, this has two locking differentials and a good traction control system. The extra flex that you get here, you probably wouldn't notice the difference because you have those features to get you through the rough stuff. So, yeah. Just not enough of a flex index improvement to uh, be worth it. Anyway, that's my opinion. Let me know your opinion in the comments below. And like, subscribe, share with your friends, all the things. As for me, I'm going to put these things back on and uh, go drive this sucker.